Hello. I'm backstage in my dressing room. Well, actually, I'm backstage in somebody else's dressing room as my dressing room is being redecorated and I'm... Uh, Oh, nothing drastic, you understand. I'm just having the wallpaper redone and putting a new shower unit in and having the large part turned into a wider walk-through area where you can have drinks and things. And tonight, this is because it just got too crowded in there, you know, with people coming backstage after the performance. So I'm having a kind of split-level effect where um, I can change and do my makeup. And then a secondary level where people who've come round backstage after the performance to see me can settle down while I'm changing and perhaps take Tommy a glass Bilbo or two. Bilbo Theatre, take two. Why not? I'm sorry, Tony, we just want you to introduce the play. Oh, uh, was that um, uh, a bit in? A bit dull, you know, just a touch tedious. Oh, I see, yes. Yes, rather boring. Oh, I see. Yes, just, you know, tremendously awfully yawn-making and frightfully dull. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Just terribly, terribly boring. I see. So this time I should be more Just kind of... try not to be so boring. Try, if you can, and avoid being quite so dull. Fine. O okay? Fine. Good. Action. <clears throat> oh, hello. Uh, not too much of the personal stuff, is that right? Yes, not too boring. I see. You just want me to talk about the play? Yes, talk about the play by all means if you want to, but try and avoid, if you can... Being so dull. Okay. Oh, I see. Fine. Good. Fine. Off you go. Take three. Oh, hello. Uh, tonight's play in the Tony Bilbo Theatre series concerns the sort of problems that can happen to any of us, the sort of problems that can crop up at any time. Indeed, I once had a cousin who had a very similar problem. His auntie, my mother's sister, and also my auntie too, as a matter of fact, although it's not really relevant to know that, um, was the last lady to drive a tram in Blackpool. And her nephew, uh, who's also my cousin, and indeed, she's my auntie too, although uh, uh, it's not really uh, important to know that, her other nephew, my cousin that is, Tony. had this... Oh, was that... Uh, Boring, so... yes. Just, just, a, just, a, just a huge amount. This is Tony Bilbo's Why big chance. A chance to break away from the cosy world of BBC Two and become Rutland Weekend hello. Television's first hello. major superstar. Hello. If this new series hello. of Tony Bilbo Theatre can make the big breakthrough that its producer hello. thinks, hello. then Tony Bilbo could be heading for the big hello. time of Russell Harty and Noel Gordon. Hello. Tonight he's playing the part of Michael Hall, a demanding role that has involved him in a vast amount of preparation. In order to get inside the character of Michael Hall, a 54-year-old suburban insurance clerk, Tony enrolled for three years in an insurance studies school, lived for a year and a half in a semi-detached house in Isha, married a nice local girl and commuted to a job in insurance in the city every day for two years. Has all this preparation helped him? Not at all, no. Why not? Well, the character I play is very superficial. And the fact that I now know all about cost analysis, percentage insurance risks, double accounting systems, and have the know-how to run an entire insurance business is unfortunately totally irrelevant to the play. I see. So it's all been rather a waste of time. Not at all, no. I mean, are you insured? No. Have you ever considered the advantages of being fully insured? Uh, uh, look, how well, about this? It's um, a simple form, an endowment policy... Between creating tonight's role of Michael Hall and selling insurance to television interviewers, Tony Bilbo's life has become very busy. Okay, Tony Love, want it on set now, Yes, but, uh, look, fill it in and we'll talk about it later, OK? There's no obligation, except in a purely legal sense. Oh, oh thank you very much. Thanks. Oh, and uh, not a word to Jenkinson here. Eh? Ah, oh, no. OK. Ah, oh, right, Tony. Uh, now, we want you to walk down the street to the end, uh -huh. and we'll pick it up from there, OK? Yeah. Oh, incidentally, thanks for the insurance policy. Oh, you got it. Good. Yes, yeah, certainly set my mind at rest, especially the tiger claws. Yes, well, it's better to be wise. I mean, uh, now, if a tiger does come along and rip your financial part, you are covered. Yes. And it's worth the extra, I think. Oh, yes, yes. Did you? Yes, oh, actually, I was thinking of uh, taking out some elephant cover. Elephant cover? Yes, because I've read, you know, that if elephants do stampede, they can destroy a whole house. Yes, certainly. Are there uh, many elephants in Rygate? Uh, no, no, not, not too then many. Then the premium needn't be very high. No. Needn't be anything like as high as your personal West End cinema anti-tarantula bite uh, premium, for example. No, well, in that case, I'll definitely have elephant cover. Fine, but uh, I'm afraid it doesn't cover the car as well. OK, well, I'll take my chances against the elephants in the car. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Well, off you go then. And down there. Action. Buy a flag, sir. What? Buy a flag. Why? It's flag day, sir. Flag day? Yes. Flag day for what? Flag day for flags, sir. For flags? Yes, it's hard to flog flags these days, sir. It's a flagging industry, so we're flogging flags to help the flagging floggers. Floggers? Floggers of flags, sir, whose flag flogging is flagging. I don't think I quite understand this. You don't have to, sir. Just buy a flag. What, one of these? Yes, sir. They're a bit big, aren't they? They're flags, sir. Well, I can see they're flags. But the whole point of a flag day is you're supposed to be able to put the flag in your lapel. You won't pin one of these in your lapel, sir. I can see that. Why don't you just make little paper flags? Well, this way, sir, we cut out the middle, man. We just flog the flags direct. <laughs> but that's silly. I mean, on, on Poppy Day, one doesn't buy war veterans. Be simpler if you did, sir, then they wouldn't have to spend all year making poppies to sell on Poppy Day so that they can afford to spend all year making poppies. Don't be silly. On Lifeboat Day, one doesn't buy a lifeboat. Indirectly, you do. You don't buy a bit of wood. They're not made of wood. Well, whatever they're made of. There you are. You see, you've lost the thread of your argument. No, I haven't. I simply don't want to buy a flag. In that case, sir, I shall poo-poo you. What? Poo-poo. Stop it. Poo-poo. Will you stop it at once? Will you buy a flag? No. Poo-poo. Oh, all right. Absolutely ridiculous. more, you're a dirty little man. A filthy, unpleasant beast with a nasty, horrid habit that should be whipped out of you. You cringing, whimpering, snivelling, scurrilous, creepy little oik. Yours sincerely, and just sign that and send it with a demand for the money, OK? Yes, Mr Nock. Thank you, Miss Enter. Ah, good morning. Oh, good morning. You've come about the... Uh, I, I've come about the chairs. The chairs? Yes, the um, antique chairs. The antique chairs? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a sex problem, isn't it? Yes, how did you know? Well, when you've been in this business a fortnight, you pick up a thing or two. I see. And one of the first things you do pick up is that people who are interested in antique chairs do tend to go to antique furniture shops and not, on the whole, to places with sex problems written very clearly on the door. I see. Mind you, it's not always true, is it, George? No, Mr. Not. Actually, that is a sex problem, but a very rare one. Oh. Well, now we know it's a sex problem, what can I do for you? Oh, well, I, I, I'd like one. I'd like to have a sex problem. Oh, I see you don't have one. No. And you're interested in purchasing one of ours. Exactly. Oh, fine. Well, what sort of sex problem were you interested in purchasing? Well, what have you got? Well, I've got them all. Not personally, but in the shop, you know. Mind you, I recommend you lay off the antique chairs. Really? Yes, very expensive. He's on six Chippendales a week. The dry cleaning bills alone are worth a fortune. Now, I've got a catalogue here with some of them in. Why don't you just browse through and see what you don't fancy? Mr. Knock. Yes, Miss Enter. Telephone for you. Oh, thank you. That is a nice one. Thank you. Oh, and there's a Mrs. Pollock on the line for you, sir. Ah, oh, good. Hello? Yes? Good Lord, never heard of that one. Fine, we'll be around right away. Yes, we'll bring a bucket. Thank you. Where do these clients get their ideas from, Betty? Betty! Sorry, Mr. Knock. Just an idea. I don't know why I keep you. Oh, yes, I do. Um, this? Yes. Is this generally available? Oh, no, sir. You've chosen a very rare one there. I think I'd like that problem. 
Well, it's not so much a problem, sir. It's more a way of life. Well, I'm not married, you see, and I would quite like to have something to worry about. Well, if you can afford the equipment, sir. Oh, is it very expensive? Well, to get it to fit properly, sir, yes. It has to be nice and uncomfortable. Uh, how do I get hold of it? Well, that's the problem, sir. No, 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 the equipment. Ah, oh, you just pop along to this address, sir. They'll fix you oh, up. Thank you very much, very civil. Not at all. Right, Betty, the pullets. Come on, I've got a big problem. I'll say you have. To see to. Right, Mr. Knock. The pullets have got the six man in again. Third time this week. Good morning. Good morning. Can I help you, sir? Uh, yes, I've uh, come about uh, this <clears throat> little dog. Uh, lost. What is it really, sir? I've come about the special equipment for gentlemen. Certainly, sir. Francis! Yeah? Gentlemen for you. Oh, dear. Oh, hello. I'm Francis. I'm in the CIA. Um, what? I mean, uh, CID. Uh, silly me. I, I nearly blew my cover. Is this your first time here? Uh, yes. 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 Well, you're in good hands. This way. I've got a beginner. Trollop. Oh. Whose bit did you get out the wrong side of? Twenty minutes they've been in there. What a problem. Maybe we should get a new one. We can't afford a new problem. Well, the neighbours have got a new big one. Nurse? Nurse? Yes? Cold water and plenty of it. Now... Is that comfortable, love? Well, not very, no. Uh, well, I might be able to take it in a bit, but not right away. I've got my hands full with a police ball. Oh, but I need it tonight. I've got a date. Ooh. Francis. Yeah? How do I look? Oh, let's have a look, love. Oh, so still needs a bit of work, love. Really? Yeah, it's not everyone who can wear a bin. Well, what about some boxes on the feet? I don't honestly know. Well, it might set you off a bit. Well, I'll try it. I'll try it. He's just not got the figure for that bin. Michael, darling, I'm so happy. I'm glad. Come here, my darling. Oh. I'm so proud of your problem. Let's think of it as our problem, Glenda. No, it's your problem, Michael. I knew you'd like it. I think that we can still get over it. Not in this armour, we can't. No, I... I mean your problem. Oh. Well, uh, look, don't let's get over it too quickly. I I've only just finished paying for it. Darling. Darling. Kiss me. Mm. 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 That was wonderful. I know. Hello. What? Hello. Oh, hello. Not interrupting anything, I hope. Well, as a matter of fact... Oh, you are... uh, don't mind me. I've been here for ages watching you. What? Yes, I, ever since the beginning. Obviously, I kept quiet because I wanted to hear what you were doing. Well, of all the bloody... Uh, please, I... please don't abuse me. You see, I have a problem. I'm a non-voyeur. What? Yes, I like to watch people not having sex. That's difficult. Round here it is. Oh. So, obviously, you two are perfect for me. Do you mind if I sit down and watch you for a while? Well, I don't know. Oh, I shan't interfere or uh, uh, burp or tell unsavoury anecdotes or anything like that. What do you think? I don't know. Lovely problem you've got. Oh, do you think so? Yeah, smashing. Oh, thanks very much. It's new. Is it a sex problem? It's going to be. Yes, I think everybody should have a problem these days, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yes, I think that was Mr Heath's failing, don't you? Not enough problems. That's what I said to my late ex-wife. You've got a late ex-wife? Yes, they're much nicer than real ones. Oh, I don't think you can beat a good wife. Oh, well, you can, if she let you. Shh, listen. What? Can't you hear it? Oh, yes. Listen, darling, it's the song of the insurance men. No, no, the song, oh, the insurance men. What? The song, oh, the insurance men. Oh, sorry. They gather here every evening to sing insurance ballads round the campfire. 
We'll cover you against fire and flood. Way ho endowment. But not riot, war, nor act of God. Way ho endowment. Over a period of 30 years. Way ho endowment. Unless, of course, you're in arrears. Way ho and up your premium. And look, up in the trees, accountants. The long day's accounts are done and they gather here in the ragged woods to sing accountancy shanties. Twas in my youth I ran away to accountancy One day with pen and paper, collar and stud Accountancy was in my blood Oh, scribble away and bounce the books And sing an accountancy shanty I chartered an accountant at the age of twenty-one Oh, scribble away and bounce the books And sing an accountancy shanty So raise a glass of medium dry sherry To the golden age of VAT Oh, scribble away and bounce Balance the books and sing an accountancy shanty. Oh, it's a rare sight for this part of Rygit. Yes. And look. Where? Over there. Oh, yes. Look, darling. It's the singing gynecologist. I don't want to fall in love again. I know my heart. Could never stand the pain Meanwhile I'll try To get by If I can From now on I'll be Another lonely man I'd like to thank you For the way you held my hand That moonlit night down by the old Rio Grande Now even Paris in the spring Doesn't mean a thing But the streetlights seem to understand That I don't want to fall in love again I know my heart could never stand the pain Meanwhile I'll try to get by if I can From now on I'll be another lonely man When I come home at night A little worse for dream I see my empty room and razor by the sink But it's no use to me It runs on batteries And I've got to get some new ones I think Oh, I don't want to fall in love again I know my heart could never stand the pain Meanwhile I'll try to get by if I can From now on I'll be another lonely man And then at one point in the story I rather fade out of the plot and they follow this singing gynaecologist who sings a song about never wanting to fall in love again and then goes off to find out about a holiday and a travel agent. And I'm not really in that bit, except just to say this. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Tony. Not at all. Oh, and thanks for the insurance. Pleasure. All on me, cos we were both dressed up as kangaroos. Oh, I don't want to fall in love again. I know my heart could never stand the pain Meanwhile I'll try to get by if I can From now on I'll be another lonely man From now on I'll be another
Hello? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. I beg your pardon? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were gay. No, I'm not. No. Well, still best to be on the safe side, eh, sir? Now then, are you sure you're not gay? No. Not gay or not sure? Look, I'll put you down as I don't know. Where? On the travel form, sir. Why? Well, best to not have any nasty misunderstandings on holiday, eh, sir? Whew, the stories I could tell you. <laughs> now, it was a holiday, I take it. Or rather, you take it. I don't take it. I just give it to you. I don't even give it to you. You pay for the damn thing. Yes, sir. Shut up. I'll put you down on the transvestite tour to Tunisia. Right. Now then, you want an interesting time? Plenty of experiences? Lots of fun? No questions asked? No, I want a holiday. Oh, you are a sport sport. Right, sir. Where to? Germany. Germany, eh? Anybody see you come in? No, I didn't. Well, either. better not take any chances. I'll close for lunch. Right, sir. Here's your passport. It's in the name of André Jacquemin. You're a Breton sailor on sick leave. You're on your way to Dusseldorf to see your stepsister Helga, a textile machinist from Bochum. Here's a picture of Helga with husband Klaus and baby horse. That's Blitzen, their dog. Right. You want a travel permit, alien papers and a German railway warrant. Here you are. Put this berry on. Good. And I think the moustache. Yes, fine. And just the bread. Right. Under the counter, down the tunnel. I'll keep watch by the door. OK. Now look here. Wait a minute, man. There's no time to lose. Quickly, they change the guards every ten minutes. <laughs> look out! That was close. Right, still want to change your mind? No. Nope. Good man, down the hatch. Cheers. No, no, down the hatch. Oh, the hatch. And remember, the password is Bremner. Billy Bremner. Got oh, no, silly me, sorry. Brayman, I always get them confused. Brayman. That's right, Billy Brayman. And remember, if you're caught as a civilian tourist, they'll show no mercy. Bite on this and count to ten. Cyanide? Sure, but makes you feel better. Is the travel agent cracked? Where is the customer going? Wait just a minute whilst the writer has a jolly good think. Raymond? Mazel tov. Ah, is this the right way to Dusseldorf? No, you got it wrong, mate. This is the transvestite tour to Tunisia. Oh. Germany is through that door over there. Mr. Grimway. Ah, uh, yes? Can you walk this way? Such feed lines from an Arab. Over uh, here. Right away. Cheerio. Bye. Have uh, a nice holiday. Holiday? <laughs> you call this a holiday? You call this a holiday? When I was a little boy, maybe 10, 11... No that's... reminiscences. See what I mean? Holiday, indeed. No, 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 well, that's... No, here he is, no, direct no, from no, the no, talk no, of the town, no. Tunisia, Vera Sharif! He's good, you know. Really? Yeah. You sure you're not gay? Yes, quite sure. Oh, please yourself. Through that door over there, and good luck. Thank you. What am I to 
darling. Oh, hello. You come down the apples and pears to see old Rita, then? Well, possibly. Aren't you the little darling, then? How'd you like it? What? How'd you want it? What? How would you like me to give it to you? What? Your travel currency, dear. Oh, in Deutschmarks, please. Oh, honestly, you men are all the same. Luckily. Take me with you, please. What? I'll do anything. Just no, take me dear, with you. Come oh, away. Please. Come along. Well, what's she want? Oh, don't mind her, dear. She's in travel insurance. After a few months, insurance can start to get you like that. Yes. Mind you, it's always worthwhile being insured. Oh, yes. Are you insured? No, not yet. Oh, no. you should be. Mm. It's always worthwhile. Mm. So, uh, what sort of policy would you like, then? What? Now, this one matures after 25 years. You get an interest-free bonus and £10,000 cash on maturity. Mm -hmm. In the unlikely event of your decease, your beneficiary, whomsoever you care to nominate, will get a tax-free bonus of £20,000 cash on the nail. £20,000? Mm. Oh, it does sound good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Well, just sign it, dear. I just love fully insured men. Do you? Mm. Just for me. All right. Oh, oh terrific. Well, well done, you. old chap. Oh. Very good, sir. So you'll never regret it. A fully comprehensive insurance policy is someone no one can afford to be without these days. Jolly, well done. Well done, well done Miss Hargreaves. Thank you, Mr. Grimwide. Show go well. Oh, audience a bit so-so. They love the dancing. And who's that clever boy by insurance. Yes, another victim of unscrupulous insurance salesmen. You have been warned. Be on your guard. Considered taking out a personal accident policy. What, for an extra five a week? It's worth it. Oh, I suppose so, yes. Have you ever considered the advantages of taking out a retirement policy, for example? And, of course, you'll be fully covered against any accident. Including acts of God? Well, up to a point, yes. And, of course, you can cash it in at any stage into liquid currency, which will help you if you are in any tight situation financially. Although I'm... This policy covers you for all accidental breakages in the home. Oh, really? Yes, then you'll be completely safe. That was a public service anti-insurance film on behalf of the Anti-Insurance League. Tony Bilbo Theatre, take 139. Oh, hello. Tonight's play in the Tony Bilbo Theatre series tells the story of a 54-year-old insurance salesman. Now, I don't know how much you know about insurance or whether you ever considered the advantages of having a decent insurance policy, but uh, I can assure you it would be really worthwhile. If you'd like more details about a personal insurance policy, tailor-made for you, absolutely individual to your own requirements, possibly allowing you to have £2,000 every week for life, 